Hello everyone, welcome back to Just The Tips for round 23. I keep saying it, but I can't believe we're already up to round 23. This is a joke. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I am uh, loving the buzz of the season right now. I find myself, you know, walking down the street, maybe mid-season, I was probably, you know, thinking about other things to think about than footy. Maybe that's because West Coast suck, um, and also probably just because it was that crushing time of the year where like half the league knows that their season's ruined. Um, but now we're in that upsurge again where finals are just around the corner. I find myself walking down the street thinking about footy again. And, um, you know, is that because West Coast is one-two on the bounce? It's a little bit of a factor, but to be honest, I walk down the street thinking, gee, surely Port don't cook the sh showdown again, do they? Or surely Fremantle don't miss the eight. I can't believe the Bulldogs aren't making top four. It's a great time of the season to be following it. So looking forward to round 23. Let's talk about last week first and the footy tipping results, which uh, I think across the league were horrendous. I got four correct tips out of nine. Um, you know, to be honest though, that's not bad. I'm like in the top third of the competition and I moved up 30 spots with four out of nine correct tips. That's crazy. Um, thankfully, I changed my tip last minute from Collingwood and I nearly got that wrong too. Brisbane, I didn't see coming. I didn't tip West Coast. I thought Frio would beat Geelong. Port Adelaide got right. Essendon at the last gasp failed me. I tipped Hawthorne correctly, thankfully. St Kilda was more predictable. And the Bulldogs losing to Adelaide, especially by 40 points or whatever it was in the end, was a little bit out of left field. But nonetheless, four out of nine, moving up the rankings somehow, crazy stuff. But let's talk about how everyone in our competitions went. So our members tipping competition, the winner this week is King917 with six correct tips. Six to win a round of tipping. First of all, great tipping. Like most people bottled it this week. That is great tipping, but six to win a round is crazy. The general tipping winner was Pez Dispenser 12. Eight correct tips. That's outstanding. Well done, Pez. Uh, I don't know how you did that. I presume you tip West Coast, or maybe we were the wrong one you got wrong. I wouldn't blame you for that. The members tipping leader is still real swift has been all year, 127, and the general tipping leader is Ryan Chappie with 131. I think that's the first time I've seen that name leading the tipping competition, so well done. Meanwhile, Tully Griffiths continues his stranglehold as the number one fantasy league player in the true footy competition with an average of 21.54. So well done to all of you guys. So we will crack into the tips. Now, uh, if you do me a favor, I know I ask for this a lot, but I'm really trying to hit 30,000 subscribers by grand final day. And we're about five or six weeks off and I got to get about a thousand more. Um, so if there's anyone that's looking for plenty of AFL content, particularly as trade rumors start to really hot up and the final series, it would mean a lot to me if you consider subscribing to the channel. But let's get into round 23. All right, it kicks off with Essendon versus Sydney at Marvel Stadium. These two sides, I feel like, usually combine for good games. And I know that Sydney won this game earlier in the year by five goals. Sydney were going well. Essendon were going relatively well as well. I remember that being a good game. Sydney just kicked away. This is an interesting time to intersect Essendon ruining their season at the last gasp. Well, Mac Andrew ruined their season. Um, tough game. Tough run of three games. They've been involved in three thrillers in a row and came out on the wrong side two out of those three occasions. And the vibe at Essendon is very negative. Now, I'm kind of hoping they find another way to respond. And I think that if they do somehow respond this week and beat Sydney, it really will quell a lot of concerns or doubts, I suppose, or at least it should, in my opinion. You know, if, if they show a lack of mental fragility to win this game, then I think that's progress. So I still think there's something to play here for Essendon and that playing group. Do we have confidence, though? Well, you know, Sydney are not looking like the full package at the moment. I mean, we're a couple weeks removed now from the 112-point loss, and it felt like against Collingwood, Took them a long time to get going. But once their key players, uh, in particular Heaney and Warner, who were unreal in that game, worked into it, you felt like they breathed a little bit of life back into that season. And that could be a springboard into the rest of the year. But it's just so hard to really back them in based on one good quarter. They were 25 points down, also 27 points down, came back and won. Plenty to play for, really. I mean, Sydney, uh, I think if they drop a winnable game here, they still... Do they still, are there still a chance to miss the four, I think? And certainly top two. Um, so, with that all being said, I think I think we might be up for a close one here. I don't think Essendon are going to get slapped. Um, but I don't want to tip them. So I think I'm going to go Sydney. If we if we accept or believe in the possibility that they're going to, you know, get their shit together to some extent, I wouldn't expect a blowout or a polished performance. And I don't think Essendon are that bad, despite the negative vibe at the moment. So let's say Sydney by 11 points. I reckon it'll be a better game than people might think. Gold Coast versus Melbourne. Gold Coast coming off 
couple of weeks of travel. Uh, it still baffles me that they went to Perth and then had to play Essendon at Marvel. I'm not too sure what the go is there. Uh, but nonetheless, first away win of the season, and their last home game was a loss to the Lions. Their form has been solid, and I think Mac Andrew being this floating forward for them has really added a different edge to them offensively. He's kicked seven goals in two weeks. He kicked four against Essendon, three against West Coast early. Um, so there's that to consider, and I think their form has been fairly solid. And they're coming up against a side whose season is just about broken, some key players out, and um, you know grinded a two-point loss to Port Adelaide in a very ugly game of football. And I think the spirit at Melbourne is fairly low at the moment. Do they have much to play for? I'm not convinced. Um, I think their best football this year has been okay. It's been decent. Um, but there has been a big divergence between that, and I'm not confident we're going to get the best version of Melbourne in this game. Why would we? Considering Gold Coast home record, I think Gold Coast at home is a safe tip. So let's say 20 points. I uh, could be wrong on that, but I'm thinking Gold Coast. Now, this is one of the games of the round, particularly when you consider impact on the top eight. Now, the Giants have put in a really good run of form. You know, in the football come down, I will note, I didn't really talk about the fact that GWS kicked 13-4 to beat Brisbane, and a few people in the comments pointed that out. And generally speaking, their efficiency and ability to hit the scoreboard has been, well, very good, and it's ultimately won them a few games this year. Also, their slow starts make them a little bit vulnerable. So the idea there is that maybe they're not as sustainable with their current run of form. On the other hand, there's some upside there with their slow starts and their strong finishes. If they can level that out, they'll be a formidable team. Look on quality, GWS at Sydney at this time of year is a tough ask. On the other hand, we have Fremantle, who with four games to go were a genuine chance of finishing top four if they won all their games. Or well, potentially top two, I think it might have been. They have dropped two games and most expected them to win. I thought they would beat Essendon and I thought they would beat Geelong. They've put themselves in the position where they now need to win this game Obviously, other results will dictate this, but if they don't win this game, there are more than 50-50 chance to miss the finals, depending on other results. So with that all being said, I have this weird feeling that Fremantle is going to win this game. Now, that's not completely baseless. Fremantle are a good away from home team, and I think are pretty good at bucking expectation of them. And sometimes that's a bad thing. They'll lose games they should win. But I think this Fremantle team is dare I say it, too good to just go out without a whimper this year. And I think they might pull off a win here against the GWS side that has been clawing over the line to some extent. I think GWS's form has been better. There's no doubt about that. But this is what my gut's saying. Now, I know I get picked up for tipping on my gut. There's a, there's a couple people out there who just leave shitty comments like, oh, this is dumb tipping. You should give up. You just go off your gut. Oh, you have body odor and bad breath and you're a bad kisser. Actually, no, that was my ex who said that, sorry. But generally speaking, I think I'm gonna I think I'm just gonna go with one Rafi this week. And I think I think Fremantle is going to throw everything back into chaos and win this game. My my bold prediction, 10 points. Oh, grand final replay between the Brisbane Lions and the Collingwood Magpies at the MCG. Now, when this game was fixtured for a round 23, you'd think, shit, this is going to have a huge impact on the season. And to some extent it will, but only for one team, because I think Collingwood's basically out now. Um, frustrating season for them to hold no first round pick and to probably miss out narrowly on the finals with an aging list. It's, uh, it's going to be an interesting gut check time for Collingwood. There's been some adversity with injuries, but ultimately... I think, um, you know, I think the way they've structured their list has probably made them a little vulnerable. But nonetheless, they do play with spirit. They've got a lot of character, this Collingwood side. And I don't think I see them rolling over in the same way I just thought Melbourne might. I don't think Collingwood will. So at the MCG grand final replay with no first round draft pick, I think Collingwood will come to play. Now, the Brisbane Lions at the MCG haven't gone too badly there. And I mean, oh... Well, I'm really talking about finals. Um, they played Hawthorne this year. I think that might have been at Marvel. Um, either way, I think if they nearly won on grand final day, then the doubts on Brisbane at the MCG are not as strong for me. And this is also not the same Collingwood that beat them there. So with heaps to play for, they dropped a winnable game last week, 11-16 uh, to 13-4, as people point out in the football come down. I think, I think Brisbane are too good. I think Brisbane will be too good. I wouldn't, uh, this Collingwood side can do things. Like, I, I just thought they would, you know, against Carlton, I tipped them to just shit stir a little bit. And I was right. So there's a chance of that, but I'll say Brisbane win in a close game, 15 points. St Kilda versus Geelong. Now, a few weeks ago, again, I might have said, said you know, St Kilda are plucky at the moment and their best is good. They smashed West Coast and they smashed Essendon, which I know that smashing West Coast isn't a big deal, um, but it was probably still a, a sign of improvement and 
every now and then St Kilda put up these 100 plus scores and then the next week they barely score and last week they beat Richmond but it's been up and down and, and the week before that they were slapped by Brisbane so I think they're a little bit pick and choosy as it currently stands and Geelong you know, I thought might have been vulnerable here, but their run of form has been good. And I think beating Fremantle in Perth, off the top of my head, might be their most impressive win of the season. So with Dangerfield in form, it's going to be very hard to tip against Geelong. Now, it's at Marvel Stadium, not the G, not GMHBA. These sides met earlier this year and Geelong won narrowly. I think that was actually round one. Oh, I think I think you'd be a brave man to tip St. Kilda here. So I'll say Geelong conservatively by 26 points. Um... Oh, yeah, I'd be pretty surprised if Geelong dropped this. So 26 points. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. The showdown. Look at the ladder position. Fourth versus 15th. And yet, I am not confident about tipping Port Adelaide here at all. Now, that is not to undersell that Port Adelaide have been good. They have been good. And they're, you know, if they're in the mix for the top four, they're in the mix of the flag. And, you know, they've beaten some really good teams. You know, they just smashed Sydney by 112. Their form line's been good. Scrappy win over Melbourne. One ugly. Generally speaking, you know, beat Carlton in Melbourne. Mind you, Carlton's form since hasn't been the most convincing. Nonetheless, nonetheless, heaps to play for against an Adelaide side who are bottom four. But on their best day, do not look anything like the bottom four team. Most recently, smashed the Western Bulldogs by 39 points with a very efficient forward line. Now, the extra context to this... The last three showdowns, Port Adelaide has gone in as favourite. Adelaide has won. Adelaide have been up and down this year, but they also have beaten Port Adelaide this year. So I am not sure about this. I'm going to be completely honest. I am having full doubt over Port Adelaide. The only conclusion I can make here is surely not. I'm going to tip the power because that is the logical thing. But Adelaide's form, unpredictable, good against the power. There is an upset brewing here potentially, but I'm going to go with... Maybe just one roughie this week. I've tipped Freeman. I'll say Port Adelaide by 13. Bulldogs versus North Melbourne. Hmm. This would be an interesting one because they played not long ago and North got within three goals. Now, the Bulldogs form around that has been largely good, save for two horrendous trips to Adelaide where they got their pants pulled down. But then nonetheless, they're still a good team. So what do we make of their recent loss? I think, you know, before the Adelaide game, I was thinking, sure, they'll finish third and potentially play the Brisbane Lions in a grand final. And now... Now, they probably can't make the four, and if they lose a winnable game in the final two, they probably miss the eight. So, what a season this is. Look, on, on quality of list, the Bulldogs should win this game. North Melbourne were patchy against West Coast, where they dominated a lot of the stats, had a lot more possession, had a lot more inside 50s. Um, generally speaking, looked pretty slick. I mean, there were some defensive errors for sure. Ball use inside 50, not good. Ultimately, lost the game that they should never have lost by falling away badly in the last quarter and a half, conceded 12 goals. This is to be expected with young sides. So the thing I'm wondering is, will that make them angry? That was They're on the verge, well, they were on the verge of claiming their fourth win, which would have been their most wins in a season for three years or something like that. They want to demonstrate that improvement. So North still have plenty to play for here and could make a game of it. I think it would be a brave man to tip North, so I'm not going to be that brave man today. The Bulldogs have a lot on the line here. And, um, you know, I'd hate to see the Bulldogs blow the top eight because they were looking shit hot not long ago. I'll say I'll say the oh, last game was 17 points. I'll say 30 points this time. Hawthorne v. Richmond. I don't know how much there is to analyze about this game. I think Richmond is desperately waiting for the season to end. Like I said, haven't put themselves to shame. It's just so much adversity, so little green shoots at the moment. I mean, look, there's a few good young talents at that team, but I think they're waiting for the trade and draft period where they can finally breathe a bit of life into this list. It's been overexposed through no fault of their own, and they need some young talent. So oh, I don't really think they are a huge chance to beat Hawthorne. Hawthorne just beat the Blues, who admittedly cop some injuries, but they still punished them by 74 points. And Honestly, like they have looked shit hot this year. I, I don't think I need to deliberate too much. I'll say Hawthorne by 40 points. I'll be stunned if they don't win this game. Finally, West Coast v Carlton. I will be streaming this on the True Footy live stream. Last Eagles stream of the season, by the way, guys, just as an aside. But this game, you know, at the start of the season, again, you look at this and going, oh my God, this could be 20 goals. Um, they're intersecting at a point where West Coast has won two on the bounce, admittedly only against Gold Coast and against North Melbourne. But the nature of those wins probably did add something different to the narrative at West Coast where they came from behind both times and showed an unwillingness to lose, and that is progress. So there is something to be taken from that, even if they didn't play particularly well against North Melbourne. So belief is a funny thing in footy. 
and West Coast stats profile wasn't good against North Melbourne, but you know if they come home to play Andrew Gaff's final game, last home game for the year in front of a home crowd, vibe is good. This could be a danger game for Carlton, particularly when you consider the form slump and the injuries. Now, I'm not 100% sure where it sits with Kerno and Mackay. I think there's some doubt on both of them. And that really does even up the contest quite a lot. And I mean from 20 goals, it evens it up a bit. And this Carlton side just doesn't look dangerous at the moment, and they are vulnerable. Now, they need to win this game, and they should win this game. Um, the extent to which they will have players missing will remain to be seen. But either way, I think I'm going to tentatively tip Carlton here. West Coast is capable of a shock upset purely because of where Carlton is at the moment. I don't think they're going too shit hot West Coast, but like I said, belief is a funny thing in footy, so you never know. But I'm going to say that, you know, without Kerno kicking 19 goals <laughs> in a game, um, I'll say Carlton, this, might, this could be either a really good contest or it could be an absolute shit fest in which Carlton wins. So I'll say Carlton by three goals considering their injuries that is the conclusion of round 23 as we look at the ladder sydney stay on top with a win over essen and presumably port adelaide if they win the showdown get a top two spot with a huge clash against freeman on the final round geelong up into third geelong a serious chance for the minor premiership if sydney drop a game like there is a genuine chance of that Brisbane in fourth with a win. GWS and Fremantle close the gap. So now Fremantle against Port Adelaide, that's going to be a huge game. That's if Fremantle win. Either way, it's going to be huge. Bulldogs and Hawthorne into the eight. Carlton, Collingwood and Essendon still in those same positions. And other than that, the latter stays pretty much the same. But that is my take on round 23. Upset of the week, Fremantle to beat GWS. More gut and intuition than real logic. But honestly, mate, if you're if you're going to try and tell me you're tipping every game on logic, your tips are probably not going to be that good either. No, I'm not getting defensive and preempting your criticism. Nah, let me know in the comments what you think, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.